Today I'm talking about unity. <clears throat> uh, early morning hours of Christmas Eve, of New Year's Eve, I had a dream, and in this dream, uh, I made a statement to a group of people, and I said, there is no unity in the church. There are many Protestant churches, and they are divided by de denomination, and they do not work together or with other churches. There are also many independent churches, and they are trying to become mega churches, not working together. Even the Catholic Church has no unity. The diocese across the street from where we are does not work with the one that is by where I live. So sadly, this is true, and there is no real unity in the church. And I have touched on this in some of my teachings. Jesus is the head of his body, the church. Paul has a pretty good teaching on this in his second letter to the Corinthian church, 1 Corinthians. We are all different members of the body with our own calling, not just as individuals, but also as groups, fellowships, and organizations. Jesus has given all of us different gifts and callings in our mother's womb, and the Holy Spirit is trying to get us to recognize them and live accordingly. When we are where God has planned us for us to be and doing what he has planned for us to do, <clears throat> then we will be much more effective for the work of his kingdom in the earth as it is in heaven and the most satisfied in our life. The Bible is full of commands on unity. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do not covet your neighbor's stuff. Lay down your life for your brothers and sisters in Christ. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Love your enemies and pray for those who spitefully use you. These are commands from Jesus who did all these things to bring salvation, which unites us in him as one body. A psalm of David about an event that happened decades before he was born is the clarion call for unity. Psalm 133, this is the Living Tree Version. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brothers to dwell together in unity. It is like precious ointment on the head, coming down upon the beard, Aaron's beard, coming down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon coming down upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessings, life forevermore. There is one God, one Father, one Son, one Spirit, one baptism, one body. We are not saved to be on our own. We are saved into the eternal body of Christ. If we reject God's salvation, we will die into a lonely life in the eternal lake of fire. God's ordination of the family is a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined with his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And God said, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. This is family. This is what we're, our initial experience in life is with family, our natural family. And then we must be born again. We must be born of spirit and water, baptized in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We must be uh, uh, repentant of our sins. We must be washed in the blood of the Lamb. <clears throat> we are not meant to be alone. We are meant to be in a natural family and a spiritual family. You must be born again, born of spirit and water. Unity is the only way to live united with Christ. <clears throat> Jesus said, we must abide in him and he in us. Paul teaches us that we are a living body, each having their place and responsibility. Peter teaches us that we are living stones built on the foundation of Christ. Paul said, one plants, one waters, and another harvests. Unity is each doing what God has called them to do, blending together our gifts for the harvest of souls. 1 Peter 4, 7-11, through 11, New King James Version, But for the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. 
be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift. Minister it to one another as God's stewards, as good stewards of the grace of God. Unity is a key, and I've heard teachings on unity in the church before. In my 49 years of being a Christian, uh, but it's still lost in the church today. We do not have unity in the church today. Every denomination is uh, out for their own purposes. Every local church is out for their own purposes. Uh, we don't have church growth. We have church shifting. People go to the latest church, the, the latest uh, great doctrinal interpretations, the latest prophecies, the latest, the latest, the latest. The trouble is, the latest hasn't even come yet. The latest, the last, is Christ's return to the earth. When Christ returns to set up a thousand year reign on the earth, it's going to come after much persecution and tribulation in the whole world, and especially for the church. But persecution and tribulation is when the church grows. Those who are not true Christians, those who are, uh, uh, go to church because they want to go to heaven someday, but they don't want to really be saved, they don't want to do the work of salvation, they don't want to learn the word of God, they don't want to be obedient, faithful servants of the true and the living God, because they haven't been taught, they haven't been discipled, and they haven't been joined. They haven't joined into the body of Christ. They don't understand their place in the body of Christ. They think that they are autonomous and they can do what they want and they just go along and they're going to wind up like those in Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Some of you who listen to me probably get tired of that, but that's the scariest verses in the Bible. People doing the works of the kingdom of God and Jesus says, I don't know you, you are lawless. That should scare any believer to make sure that you are in a right relationship with God. Are you unified with Jesus? Are you united with Him, abiding in Him, so that He can abide in you, so that His Spirit in you is active and alive, is teaching you, is counseling you, is comforting you, is training you, and that you love being around other Christians? Not just for fellowship, not just for potlucks, picnics, but for instruction and correction and discipline and training. These are the things that we should be enjoying. We should be enjoying being together in unity in worship of the true and the living God, the one who created the heavens and the earth and the seas and all that is within them. The one who gives life and great gifts. The first gift he gave us was life. He made us a living spirit. The second gift he gave us was family. He put us into a family so that we're not alone. We're not having to try and figure it out. We have people who are helping us to grow and mature and understand and learn and find our place. And he redeemed us so that we can be part of his body, the church and the world, again, where we're loved and we're nurtured and we're disciplined and we're trained, and we're discipled, and we're prepared, for, and we're, we're taught the necessary lessons of life as a Christian, just as we've been taught the necessary lessons of life to be a human being. Unity. It's all about unity. Everything in the kingdom of God points to unity. Everything we do must come out of unity. There are no standalone pastors uh, there's no standalone evangelists. There's no standalone apostles. There's no standalone bishops. You have to be part of a greater program, a greater gathering of saints, and not just greater in number, but greater in experience. Those who are more experienced, there's always people who have a greater experience than you. They might, and they might not be older than you. They might, they might not have been a Christian longer than you. But there's going to be people who have a greater experience in God in areas that you don't. And we need that. That's what the whole part of being in the body is. Each part is supplying what the body needs, Paul tells us. This is the part of unity that we forget, that we need the rest. We need everybody in the church as part of our body. We need to be part of their body. We need to be one body under Christ Jesus, our head. 
So unity in these days is going to be more important than ever before. As the times get harder, as the persecution increases, even in the Western church, the day will come when we're not just disliked by some and hated by a few, but we'll be disliked by many and hated by a lot. And we will be persecuted. And we'll be tried. Our faith will be tested. Are we going to have the strength of unity to support us? Are we going to be standing on our own, standing alone, hoping we can make it, hoping we can survive? Be part of the body of Christ. Christ has called us to be a member of his body. Thank him for that. Rejoice in that. And be joined with him. Abide in him. Let his word abide in you. As his spirit abides in you, let it become alive. And then let it work out through you so that you're ministering to others. And you're receiving ministry from others. This is the unity of the church that we need today. We need the fellowship. We need the worship. We need the prayer of the body together, irregardless of denominational, irregardless of church address and, and doctrine. We need to gather together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Let him provide the things that we need in our daily life. Seek him first and enter into the unity of the body of Christ in the earth where we stand together unified against the works of the devil, where we stand together unified against the works of the flesh, where we stand together unified against sin and we no longer allow sin to control our lives and our communities and our nation and the world. It only comes through unity. We have to be unified with God. We have to be unified with one another to walk in the victory that he has given us in Christ Jesus. Seek unity in your life. Seek unity in your family. Seek unity in your church and fellowship. Seek unity in your community, in your region, in your state, in your nation. Seek the unity of the Spirit of God, the Word of God, and the headship of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Amen.